Hey all, welcome back. So this video is going to be a little controversial. We're going to talk about taking steroids. We're going to talk about testosterone, HRT, and a unique way to deliver testosterone if you or someone you know is taking testosterone replacement therapy. I'm Mike Mutzel and you are tuning in to High Intensity Health. If at any point you enjoy this content, please hit that like button. You can share this with someone that you care about. And if you enjoy these videos, definitely subscribe so you get updated when we launch new videos like this. So who the heck am I to talk about testosterone? I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a hormone specialist necessarily. But I used to make and actually sell steroids in college. And so um, one of the things that actually got me into health in the first place was understanding how steroids affect the biology uh, in the body. To make a very long story short, you know, when I was 15 years old, I started getting into working out. I worked out, trained, ate. I played varsity football. You know, I did everything I could right. Uh, naturally, I got up to 195 pounds. And after five years of like grinding it out, I realized that I was not as big as the guys in the magazines. And I realized through a mentor that the way that I'm going to get that big is by using anabolic steroids. So a mentor uh, introduced me to steroids when I was 20 years old. And he taught me that you know your first cycle, your androgen receptors are very sensitive. So you don't want to do this puny little cycle with a little orals. Like a lot of people, their first cycle is like a little D-ball, which is an oral Diana ball, maybe 25 milligrams every day for four weeks. And they don't really get much in terms of gains. They lose it all and their natural testosterone levels are much suppressed after the fact. So I went big. So my very first cycle was 800 milligrams of testosterone a week, which is eight times higher than most, you know, bioidentical hormone or TRT doctors recommend. Uh, I did DECA at 400 milligrams a week and I kicked it off with 50 milligrams of D-ball every day for the first four weeks. I put on 45 pounds, a lot of strength. It was crazy, right? Because I went from basically my newbie gains kind of stopped in my 20s and then I, every time I went to the gym, it was, I would get stronger and bigger and stronger. And so like right now, just so you all know, I'm like 185 pounds. I got up to 235. Now, a lot of that was water retention. Um, but I gained a lot of strength, a lot of size very quickly. And then as soon as I got off that 12 week cycle, and I, let me just pause here. How I did the research for that cycle was Lowen's anabolic book, uh, anabolic something. It was, this was in 2001 when I ordered the book. <laughs> it was funny. It was uh, coming from Barnes and Nobles, delivered to my dad's house because I was home from my first year of college. It was 2002 when I got the book. And I remember like just waiting for the mailman to drop it off because I did not, my dad was excited that I was ordering a book because he was like, wow, he's, it's summertime, he's ordering books, you know, that's great. He's, you know, reading and everything like that. Uh, but I was so nervous that he would open it up before I could. And I went to Bellevue Library, Bellevue Public Library, and I would hide in the, up in the back part of the library to read all about anabolics. So I started learning about, you know, hormones, receptors, HP axis, all this stuff. Uh, but again, I'm, I, this, I want to make this more about you, but I just want to give you a little context of where I'm coming from so that you understand when I talk about subcutaneous uh, you know, administration of testosterone, you have a better idea about where things are going. Uh, and the thing that I learned you know, about this big cycle is the psychological addiction associated with steroids. And uh, because you start to perceive yourself to be someone that you're really not because it's kind of artificial. Well, it's very artificial. You're taking a drug to achieve some certain physical strength or look. And then once that drug goes away, so does that physical you know, person that you temporarily became when you were taking the substances. So it can be very depressing afterwards because all those gains that you gain at the gym, they start to go away. Your recovery that was just on point goes away. Your libido goes down and it can take months to recover. So what a lot of experts will say is you want to take as much time off of steroids as you did. So if the cycle was 12 weeks, you want to take 24 weeks off. And that's what I did. And I was still pretty much weaker at 24 weeks after taking this dose of steroids, which was pretty intense. Uh, I was weaker than before I started. I had less libido, everything. Um, so the natural thing I thought, here I am, this 22 year old mind thinking is I'm just going to do it again because, you know, I did a di slightly different cycle, but a little bit more intense drugs. I did Trembolone and I did testosterone and a little Winstrol. And so these were all injectable. The Winstrol is a water soluble compound. So you inject it like right before you work out. I had my roommate at the time do it. My buddy, John would pin me before we go to the gym. And anyway, got really strong from that too. And I figured out, you know, the way that you get trend is you can make it. There's these kits from cow pellets. And so you can literally do this. If you Google trend balone kits from cow pellets, you can get this conversion kit. And the, this is the anabolic steroids that they're giving to cows to make them bigger, to make the meat more 
you know, to have them have more meat, right? And I got good at making this stuff. So I would make it and also sell it to people at my college, to football players, to other people at the gym. And so I was able to, that's how I, I did it. And that was my last cycle because about eight weeks into it, I was lying in bed one night. This was after spring break. I was going to school at Northern Arizona University, my second year of college, and my kidneys, the back, they just really started to hurt. I went to the emergency room. I didn't know what was going on. I've, I've never really told anyone this, um, but my, it was like my back was cramping up. My kidneys hurt. I, I couldn't explain it, and I got pretty scared. And so I went to the emergency room. They tested my blood, my blood urea, nitrogen, some other you know, uh, electrolytes. Things were normal, but I didn't tell them I was taking steroids. They're just like, look, you're probably dehydrated. Drink more water. From the tests that we ran, there's nothing really you know, wrong with you. Your EGFR, uh, glomerular filtration rate is fine. No big deal. So, um, but that to me was like God or the universe saying, Mike, don't, don't do this. And so, so I, I came off strong as heck. My deadlift was you know, close to 500 pounds. And I was like, it, was, you know, it was like two weeks after my last injection and I wrecked my back. Like literally, it was like my last rep, my last set. Um, I was getting weaker because the drugs were, you know, getting out of my system. Trashed my back. You can see these black dots, which represent the nerves coming out. Yeah. And you'll see here at this level here, which is L4 and L5, you see how this disc is bulging out there a little bit. Oh yeah. Compared to this one, which is nice and straight. Mm -hmm. You see all these other ones are nice and perfectly straight. Yeah. Whereas here you see a little bulge. There you see another bulge there. Yeah. Right. And so you can see this nerve which is this little black line which is now in what we call the thecal sac or within this the the canal of the spine it's just getting touched by that little disc there yeah and it still hurts like right now as i lean forward my back is kind of uh, aching so um kind of the point of sharing this whole backstory uh is you know anyone that's young and is thinking about taking anabolic steroids i really want to caution you because it, you're going to be psychologically addicted it's going to affect your libido in a negative way and you're probably gonna get an injury that you may regret later in life. Uh, I never thought that at 37, I would regret, re would regret the decisions I made in my early 20s, which I do now. And, but uh, obviously I, I'm living with that, it's fine. I still can lift weights, I can still squat, I can still deadlift, um, I do this hormone free. But I do just wanna uh, caution a lot of young kids because getting steroids now is easier than it's ever been. Uh, there's, there's websites that are selling who knows what, and it's, 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 it's as easy to order DHEA, which is over the counter, uh, you know, you can order supplements just as easy as you can order steroids now. And so I wanna caution you all because I will tell you that I definitely regret those decisions. I've learned a lot from them. I would never take them back, but I would never advise anyone in their early 20s to take anabolic steroids. And here I am. You know, what I've, what I've discovered is my hormone levels never get to the levels of pre-anabolic use. And I find this is very common with a lot of men. Uh, and this happens too with women that take birth control pills. Birth control pills are a steroid. They're not an anabolic steroid. They're estrogen and progesterone based and so on, or synthetic estrogen derivatives, but they're still steroids. And when you take an exogenous steroid-like compound, it affects the whole hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis and they're also the gonadal axis and it's hard to recover from that. And so, um, you know, we'll kind of transition to TRT dosing, dosing and things that I personally do to maintain good levels of testosterone now, naturally. One thing that I found to be super effective is DHEA. Now, I don't recommend DHEA for everyone, but I do recommend DHEA for kind of post-steroid recovery. I found this to be super effective for me personally because I found that uh, my circadian rhythm was just basically a train wreck after taking anabolics. And I could never quite figure out what was going on. I took adrenal glandulars, I took this, I took that, I prioritized sleep, but I could never really get my circadian rhythm on point until I started taking DHEA. And so I found this to be very effective. And the thing that I think makes the DHEA so effective is it helps to entrain your body's circadian rhythm. So I take, this is me personally. Now, obviously I'm not your healthcare practitioner. You need to work with a doctor. You need to do some blood work all of that, but if you take 50 milligram, one study showed that when you take 50 milligrams of DHEA at 7 a.m., it can really help, you know, entrain the whole adrenal circadian rhythm axis. And so I found this like, gosh, I found this, discovered this about a year and a half ago, and I wake up now, and this is the first time in like 20 years almost, without my alarm clock, every single morning, like it's, I don't wake up feeling groggy, 
uh, ever since I took steroids, like I could not be a morning person no matter what I did. And my natural hormonal system was so susceptible. So, you know, after I hurt my back, you know, with that second cycle, I started doing a lot of endurance road racing. And I'm telling you this story to give you an insight into how susceptible your HPA axis becomes after you do steroids and hopefully dissuade you from taking them is I started overtraining a little bit, which I've overtrained before at high school, again, playing football and doing all this stuff. My testosterone levels dropped down to 92. My total, like norm, normal for men at, at, at that age, 23, should be well over six, 700. Um, and so doctors didn't know what was going on. And this is how I actually got into this field and why I'm making these videos now is I went to this endocrinologist in Seattle who's supposed to be this top dog and everything. And he just said, look, I don't, we don't know why you have idiopathic hypogonadism, but we're just gonna give you androgel testosterone cream. Well, that helped short-term symptomatically. It's just a cream you put on your stomach, but it didn't really, it didn't solve the problem. And so I started to realize that, wow, doctors can go through all this training they're super smart, like great people that can pass all these standardized tests, but they get sometimes tunnel vision about their diagnosis and they don't look or think about other factors. This doctor didn't ask me, what, what's your diet? And I was, happened to be eating a lot of soy protein back then because I worked at a vitamin store. He didn't ask me about my relationships. He didn't ask me about my sleep. He didn't ask me about my training. I was overtraining, getting a lot of phytoestrogens from soy. Uh, you know, there was all these things that were affecting my hormone levels and uh, had I not become, uh, you know, a sales rep in the nutraceutical industry in 2006, I would have never known about, you know, how to look at the root cause. And so what I'm trying to kind of convey here in, in weaving the story into some practical tips for you is you're going to be tempted to just jump on anabolics or TRT or HRT if you're feeling like you have low T or if you've taken testosterone before. Now, if you're over the age of 40, I'm totally, I think it's totally acceptable to, to just look at straight up exogenous testosterone replacement therapy as an option. Um, if you're under 40, I, I think, and I get a lot of direct messages and, and comments from people in and men in their 20s and 30s who are experiencing symptoms of low T and are wondering why. So I want you to look at your diet. I want you to look at your sleep. Sleep is super important. Uh, your exercise and also your stimulation too. You know, I, I, do you have a girlfriend? Do you have a significant other? Like I've told one client, and you're gonna think I'm crazy for saying this, but he hadn't touched a woman or seen a woman naked for like three years. And I said, dude, you need to go, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but I said, you need to go to a strip club. Uh, because uh, he, because he, was, he was so shy about being around women, okay? Now I know this may sound like crazy advice, but I just said, look, because he had low T and he had no drive, and I said, he was too shy to date. I said, look, just go to a strip club. You don't have to like touch anyone or do anything like that. But I'm like, I just want you to be around women and that will be your practice. You can talk to strippers because strippers will come up to you, right? And they'll, they're, they want you to do a lap dance with them. So I'm like, at least just get some sort of stimulation, pay to get comfortable talking to women so that you can start dating because there's really no reason for you to have a high sex drive if there's no women in your life. And this goes both ways for men and women, right? Um, so again, you might think that's so controversial and so dumb of me to say, but actually this advice really helped this individual and now he's dating again. Um, you know, he didn't go to strip clubs every day and I know that they can be kind of, you know, not the best places, kind of grimy and this and that. But again, this was just about getting mentally over, overcoming the fear of talking with women. Um, so there needs to be some of that demand uh, you know, and then stimulating the HP axis with, you know, say d things like DHEA, uh, adrenal cortisol, you know, glandular, adrenal glandular, things like that. Um, and then we'll talk about if you do go on testosterone uh, creams or injectables, the dosaging that I recommend. Uh, and again, this is personal experience because I did go back on TRT in 2012 for a short period of time. Because as I mentioned, when I did steroids in college, my HP axis was so sensitive. So when I had our daughter, um, for some reason, men's testosterone declines dramatically when there's a child born. I think it's just biologically to keep the, the, the father around so that he's not looking for other partners. My total testosterone was like 350. And I was feeling really down and uh, kind of tired and stuff like that. So um, I had no intent of really getting on testosterone again, um, but I was working with this doctor and then three doctors. I sent my labs to three different doctors that I really know, like, and trust. And they're like, look, my just get on some TRT, who cares? And I said, okay, fine. Um, and so I was on TRT for like a year and a half. 
and I really figured out the dosaging that I'm gonna recommend right now. And so what I suggest, uh, if you're gonna go on TRT, number one, if you're gonna do creams, let me pause, and, and I know I'm all over the place, guys, I'm sorry, uh, this wasn't scripted, but if you're gonna do creams, you're gonna think this is weird, but if you get them compounded from a biodem, like a compounding pharmacist, you wanna get them as concentrated as you can get, and when you d administer the dosaging, you wanna stick it in your butt. Which, okay, this sounds so crazy, you're gonna think I'm a whack job, right? But the mucosal tissue around your anal sphincter will really absorb the hormones a lot better than, say, putting it on your skin. You know, with Andrew Gel and some of these creams, I recommend putting it around right your, you know, your stomach or your arms. Um, I suggest just telling your doctor to compound it as, you know, as concentrated as you can get, a small amount, and put it uh, in your anal sphincter, okay, after you go to the bathroom in the morning. I did that in my early 20s. This is recommendation from a Dr. Jonathan Wright, who does a lot of bioidentical hormone therapy treatment here in Seattle, Washington. I went to a seminar that he taught in 2007. I think it's, it's great advice. I've recommended it to a lot of bodybuilders that I know, friends that I know, and they say it's great. Now, I personally, you know, not if, but when I go back on, on testosterone, which will probably be in my mid 40s, this is how I'm going to dose testosterone. This is what I recommend. Like I said, so I have a lot of friends in their 40s and 50s that are on hormone replacement therapy. I have no problems with people doing that. I think it's totally fine. Look, if you can do something in physiologic ranges and levels that are gonna improve your life, your sex life, your confidence, do it, man. I, hormones play a huge role in physiology. Uh, the only thing I'm not in favor of is people doing anabolic steroids and claiming they don't do them and selling meal plans and bodybuilding books. I think that is unethical, as long as people are transparent about it. You know, I have friends like Mark Bell, Stan Efforting, they're super transparent about what they do, HRT and all that sort of stuff. So here's how I recommend, I'm not, because I'm not on anything right now, I haven't been on anything for six years, but what I'm gonna do is show you what I figured out, how to get my blood levels super fine-tuned, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, tw and this is also actually a lot easier on the body, because most doctors, what they, they'll give you is a 23 gauge or a 25 gauge needle, which is big. It's gonna hurt like hell, okay? That's for intramuscular injections, which by the way, the first time I shot myself in the butt <laughs> when I was 20 years old, I almost, I damn near fainted, man. I was in my dad's bathroom. I was so nervous. I remember I was like this, you know, with my very first injection and I could barely get in. I had to look the other way and just like this because it was a big 23 gauge needle. I didn't know any of this crap. And so this is from years of really kind of being a wuss about needles, I figured this out, okay? So let's say that I have my testosterone endenthate or testosterone propionate, or for those of you guys doing gear, you know, and you have a, you know, sipinate, endenthate blend, whatever. Um, what I found to be super effective is, tw this is physiologic, this is not a steroid dose, this is TRT dosages, okay? Um, is doing 20 to 30 milligrams subcutaneous every other day. So that would be something like a quarter of a ml of a, you know, so it'd be something like point, it'd be like 25 uh, little units on here, okay? So what you're gonna do in your little insulin syringe, you're gonna clean the top of your bottle, which I don't have any, okay? To be totally honest with you all, if my hair didn't fall out like crazy when I took even physiologic levels of hormones, I would be on testosterone right now. But, um, cause it does really improve your mood. It improves your metabolism, it improves recovery. But when I take even the dosages that I'm recommending, like my friends that are in the forties and fifties take my hair, like I take a shower and I have like a, literally a ball of hair. And uh, my head is so damn big that if I go bald, I'm gonna look silly, all right? So, uh, Anyway, to make a long story short, so you do 20 to 30 milligrams of testosterone, so you're gonna have to do a little math, and most testosterone comes in 25 milligrams per ml, I'm sorry, 250 milligrams per ml. All right, so do a little math. Um, so you can do 20 to 25, you're gonna pull it out. And so it's, I'll just do it right here, and Sam, you can kind of see. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm not injecting anything, but I'm just gonna show you kind of where you can do this. So I figured out I could do it on my leg, I could do it anywhere by myself. So you just take it like this, you clean the, the bottle, and you just would stick it in sub-Q, so it's super easy, so like that. So I just poked it in, it didn't even hurt. I didn't even feel anything. And if I had hormones here, I would just press it in and pull it out. So super easy, and that's why you can, some people can dose every day if you want. So if you wanna just get you know 10 to 20 milligrams every day, again, which is totally physiologic, 
that's how much testosterone the body actually makes in you know peak you know males make so that's just physiologic and there is some controversy about this because people will say well the fat tissue has aromatase and if you're injecting testosterone into the fat tissue it's going to aromatize to you know estrogens i didn't find that to be the case and i've recommended this to tons of people a lot of other people are doing this um, the reason why you want to do this is because when you inject intramuscularly, what you're going to get is a big shift, a big delta, right? Your testosterone level, you're going to get a huge swing and then it's going to drop. That's just how the pharmacokinetics and the biology, even of a, 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 of a testosterone enanthate or cypionate ester, um, it, you know, unless you do a pellet, you're going to get a get big push and it's going to go down. And so, you're, you know, most doctors are going to recommend, you know, a 250 milligram injection every two weeks. So you're gonna do your subcutaneous, or I'm sorry, you're gonna do your IM injection, right? You're gonna do 250 milligrams, you're gonna get a big push, you're gonna feel great, and then at the end of two weeks, your testosterone level is gonna drop, you're gonna feel like shit. You're gonna have no libido, sex drive is gonna suck, recovery is gonna suck, and you're gonna go, what the heck's going on? It's because there's too much swing. And so the idea with the subcutaneous dosaging with these very small 29 gauge or 27 gauge needles is you're not gonna have all these big fluctuations in your testosterone level, so it's gonna closely mimic the f natural physiology. And here's the other thing, is most men, you know, we, we release testosterone, and we should be releasing testosterone in the morning, so you can more mimic the circadian biology of your testosterone levels by giving yourself a small subcutaneous injection in the morning. So, we've covered a lot in this video. This video is super controversial. I, I don't expect my loyal diehard you know, subscribers to be jiving with it, and that's totally fine. But again, I think this content can help people, especially young kids. And again, if you decide to do steroids, it's totally on you. Uh, you know, I would definitely advise against it. Again, this is someone that's sold steroids, that's made steroids, that's done steroids. Um, you're, that one small cycle, you're gonna have to deal with that for the rest of your life. You're gonna have to deal with the side effects that come with it, you're gonna have to deal with the low natural testosterone levels that, that are associated with that. You're gonna have to maybe, some men, their HP axis is, is so sensitive, and I'm very grateful that mine is somewhat sensitive, but I'm able to rebound and live hormone free in my late 30s, but some men, they never recover. They do one cycle, and their testosterone levels, their adrenal, everything is just shot. And mine was shot for a while, thanks to DHEA, thanks to adrenal glandulars, Thanks to light therapy, juve therapy, I've, I've been able to crank it up naturally and feel good. But uh, there's people that that doesn't happen to. And so they're on testosterone for life. And you know, you're know you gonna be using a lot of needles. You're gonna be poking yourself for a long time. And if, if you're fine with that, that's cool. But uh, I, I like to live naturally as a minimalist. I mean, I, I just think about, well, what if the supply of testosterone runs out? Or what if something happens, the FDA bans it? Or who knows what, and, and you're stuck. I mean, I just, I like the idea of giving my body the tools to, uh, to create hormones naturally. So um, anyway, I would love to know, like, if you're on HRT or if you feel like crap, some things that have helped you or affected your hormone levels, um, if you feel that this content would help someone that you know that's on testosterone and you want to tell them about that little compounding the creams down and putting it in their anal sphincter, which I know sounds a little weird, but trust me, it, it does work. There's data there. Um, and if, you know, like I've been recommending my dad get on testosterone. I, I mean, I, I think it can be very effective for men as they age. So um, hope you enjoyed this somewhat controversial video. Appreciate you tuning all the way in and I'll be following the comments bar below and we'll catch you on a future one down the road. Bye guys.